Maya Darren is one of the most important American experimental filmmakers and entrepreneurial promoters of the avant-garde in the 1940s and 1950s. In addition to filmmaking, Darren also writes a great number of essays on her film practices and about cinema as an art form. Darren encourages filmmakers to create the experiences of the reality through creative filmmaking, as she quotes in her articles. Cinema, with its capacity to manipulate time and space, seems eminently appropriate as an art form in which problems can find expression. The techniques would have been of no interest at all if they were not conceived for the purpose of conveying a meaning. So in this video, I will analyze scenes in Maya Darren's two films to show how she expresses a woman's experiences of the reality and manipulates time and space through cinematography and editing. Meshes of the Afternoon is one of the most influential works in American experimental cinema. The film was made by Darren with her husband in 1943. During the 1940s, film can be seen to reflect the volatility of the prevailing wartime period and to express elemental fear and anxiety of a society imbued with the threat of conflict. During the period, experimental filmmakers began to use film exclusively as an art form to reflect personal vision, rejecting the industrial mode of film production and conventions of mainstream cinema in favor of independent film-based artistic practices. As one of only a few women working in experimental film in the 1940s, Darren's films not only express herself, but also reflect the female psyche and the gender relations in the society. Meshes of the Afternoon is a non-narrative work in which a protagonist appears in a dreamlike state and where the camera conveys her subjective focus. The central figure in this film, played by Darren, is attuned to her unconscious mind and caught in a web of dream events that spill over into reality. Symbolic objects, such as a key and a knife, recur throughout the film, and events are open-ended and interrupted. Darren explained that she wanted to put on film the feeling which a human being experiences about an incident, rather than to record the incident accurately. In this dreamlike sequence, it demonstrates a woman's frustration and struggles through cinematography. The camera is tilting in the opposite direction to the movement of the woman. Maya Darren claims in her article that motion in motion picture medium can and should refer not only to activity within the frame, but to the action of the moving frame. As Maya Darren starts moving toward the camera from the bottom of the stairway, the camera tilts from a side to another side in order to give the impression of a rocking stairway. Also, it conveys an impression that even an ostensibly inanimate staircase conspired to frustrate a woman in her effort to arrive somewhere. The figure which had preceded the woman climbed the stairs with ordinary ease, but those same stairs became active and seemed to throw the woman back when she tried to follow. With such an act of climbing up the stairs and chasing a holy figure, it illustrates the struggles of female who always chases but forever lags behind. And it also reflects the subjective psychology of a woman when in a romantic relationship with a man and living in a male-dominated world. In fact, no special attention was paid to the spatial composition within an individual frame, but the movement over a series of frames was composed for a period of time. So the movement of the camera creates a sense of moving frame, which also externalizes the protagonist's subjective experience of the reality. In 1944, Darren created Atland, an experimental film about the struggle to maintain one's personal identity when encountering with the external world. Darren uses editing in the opening sequence to illustrate a continuous movement that joins two separate spaces. 
according to Mary Darren, separate and distant places not only can be related, but can be made continuous by a continuity of identity and of movement. At the beginning of the film, a woman, played by Darren herself, is thrown up on the beach by the sea, as if she has been washed up by the ocean, which implies a birth. Then she climbs a tree with some difficulty. But when she reaches the top, she finds herself at the end of a long dining table during a dinner party. The movement match cinematically joins these two separate spaces. In domestic space, as she is crawling across the table and trying to reach the man at the opposite end, people continue conversing and ignore the woman's existence. When she finally gets to the man, he stands up and leaves the table. The climbing sequence which juxtaposes two spaces creates a statement of the distance between the two worlds, the natural world and the human world, that symbolize a female's inner world and external world. Darren writes in her article, the editing of a film creates the sequential relationship, which gives particular or new meaning to the images according to their function. It establishes a context, a form, which transfigures them without distorting their aspect, diminishing their reality and authority, or impoverishing that variety of potential functions, which is the characteristic dimension of reality. So there may be nothing creative and meaningful about any of those shots individually, but the movement remains continuous, and the different spaces and times are bound through editing. Such a sequence highlights the subjectivity of actions as a woman encounters difficulties and struggles when she is trying to reach another world, and transcends her to a journey of examining the relationship between the internal self as it relates to the external. As a pioneer of experimental cinema as an art form, which is independent and distinct from Hollywood production values or the dramatic narrative, Maya Darren has great influences on succeeding generations of filmmakers and artists.